Kate Cascade, oh, Women yeah. for Independence. Oh uh, yeah, I think I've asked some of your members before, but did we need a Women for Independence? Oh yes, we do. Do we need all these different groups for doing independence? I don't know Why about not the just other one groups? great big yes movement. Because I'll tell you what one big yes movement would look like. It would look like a political party. It would be dominated by men and it would be dominated by white men. It would be dominated by people from certain backgrounds. It would look kind of like Holyrood. Women for Independence, we've, we maintain to have a space for women. Now, I've done public meetings. I've spoken at public meetings. The questions tend to be male-led. You look at the political debates on TV and it's that sort of banging on the table, what's your plan B yeah. kind of nonsense. But women do that too. Women do do that too. You know, I had this debate because I was making this point once before to you, Derek, and it was the same week of the Johan Lamont, uh, Nicola Sturgeon <laughs> thing. And you, not, you did that laugh at me there. <laughs> yes, you know, and I think Nicola and Johan have both said since then that it wasn't their finest yeah. moment. But it, I mean, we're having an event this Friday is in Castle Milk. We've booked a community centre. We've got Leslie Riddich and uh, Libby MacArthur, the, you know, the, the, the mm -hmm. popular River City actress, coming out to talk. For tea and coffee, a Friday afternoon. We're hoping to get the mums coming back from school. Mm -hmm. We got a phone call this morning from the hall saying, do you think you might need a bigger hall? There's so many people saying they're going to come. Now, these aren't people that are going to come and hear a public speak, they're not people going to come, a public meeting, sorry. They're not going to come and hear an aggressive debate, a point scoring debate. So Women for Independence is, is, is reaching the parts that other places don't reach. I assume it's the same for the other. I know there's a joke about how many yes campaigns, farmers for yes, former BBC journalists for yes, <laughs> you know, all these different groups. There is a sense that if you haven't got your own badge, you're yeah. not really anyone in the, but Women for Indy, Absolutely. We exist before the Yes campaign and mm. we'll probably exist after it. I was going to say, um, is, is part of the, what you're describing really is a, is a different type of en engagement. The process is, is, is different from, you know, the kind of hustings type yes. meeting which is stand up in front of a crowd and, and take the questions. Is it more like a, like a, they're not being funny here, but like a coffee morning yes, format? The absolutely. Yeah. Because... Um, the, 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 some of the polls that came out this week said women, there, there's more women undecided, women have yet to make up their mind. What, uh, part of it was quite sexist, what the hell's wrong with women kind of approach. But I'll give you an example. Women are busy. When we had a stall at Castle Milk Shopping Centre on Saturday, it's across from the community centre and there was a dancing class going on and all the young girls were going in in their costumes and going to dancing. And one of the dads came running across and said, you need to give me some leaflets. And he said, well, well, yes, certainly you can take some women for indie leaflets about what's going on. He says, all those mums sitting there say they're far too busy. They're too busy to come to anything. They're too busy to watch TV. They've got their daughters, they're at the dancing, they've got their jobs. They've got... So women are busy. And I think women haven't engaged in the independence referendum, not because they're stupid or because they, you know, there's something wrong with them, but because they're busy and they don't have to yet. We've got, what, five weeks left. The campaign, and this is going to you know, blow some people's mind, the campaign is only now starting. The rest was just clearing the air, setting the terms. If you think about a general election campaign, mm. it's a very concentrated period of three or four me weeks, and that's when people start to engage. So all the stuff we've been doing for the past two years has been building the routes, building the infrastructure, but the actual campaign proper is really only starting now. And at the moment, as I keep saying, Whatever the opinion polls say, it does not feel like a losing campaign. No. It does not feel like one. And I've been in losing campaigns. What about this? Uh, I mean, I think it was this morning I saw a picture of uh, Margaret Curran in the, in the paper and she was holding up one of those big gold coins oh. that they've got, like a chocolate coin. Oh, Derek. Uh, <laughs> I love those gold coins. I keep asking people in the Labour Party, can you give me, please, one of those medals with Alex <laughs> Salmon's head in it? And nobody will get back to me. I think they're fabulous. It's but she says that the, the women are, um, that Alex Salmon is, I think the phrase was, failing to convince women. Now, I don't know whether that's on the back of the, the currency business or not. Is, is that still at your meetings? Does that resonate at all? Does that? Um, do you know, I, I feel sorry for Alex Salmon because he has been the whipping boy for this campaign. It's been personalised. It's been, you know, anyone who's worked with Alex or done any campaigning with Alex know, knows that actually when people meet Alex one to one, including women, he's warm, he's personable, he's charming. Um, and it is, it's a lazy thing. You know, why are you voting no? Uh, I hate Alex Salmond. And, and that just means I haven't thought about it yet. Does Alex particularly put off women? I don't know. Do you think they want to Anna Sarwar? I mean, Anna Sarwar isn't a particularly... Um, 
isn't that a particularly female friendly figure? I mean, I have a cousin who was a Labour Party member for years who, who decided to vote yes because of Anis Sarwar's hectoring, sort of shouting tone. That was not how she wanted politics to be. So Alex Salmon's become more than just a person now. He's just a, a symbol, something that people can hide behind so that they don't need to think. Um, quite often if you say, well, you know, Alex, Alex is an older guy, we've got Nicola coming up, and then they go, oh, right, I hate her too. You know, so you can't mm -hmm. win. Um, I do think Alec, that this I hate Alex Salmon thing is, is it lazy. Would, it would imply that the flip side was that women were turned on by Alistair Darling. Yeah, it doesn't turn me on. Um, it is this, Alec has not been compared like for like. Do you think women warm to David Cameron? Do they warm to Nick Clegg? Um, mm -hmm. Do women warm, you know, I can't think of a male, a male politician that you could say, well, that guy really hit the, the mark with women. Women warm to that, maybe Nelson Mandela or someone, but sadly he's not in the Yes campaign. Um, although his spirit perhaps is, if I can say that, um, the spirit of hope. But yeah, I think I've just claimed Nelson Mandela for women for <laughs> India. That might be a step too far, but it is hard to think of what figures would get women behind them. We hope people like Leslie Riddoch um, women love Leslie Riddock, her down-to-earth approach. The fact that she just tells you it like it is and she's not a politician, that's what's interesting. Women engage with women who are or figures who are not politicians. You, you said there about um, the Yes campaign without the different groups would have looked like a political party, but I mean, do you think that after September, actually, that that is what might happen to the wider yes movement, that there, there is going to be a gap, between, uh, win or lose. There is a space in our polity for a different, uh, a different tone, different narrative, different people. Yes. People who could come from, from Labour. I mean, supposing there's a no vote, a lot of Labour people who want change but don't want independence might find it quite convenient to leave you know, yes. the Labour Party, into a new uh, zone, a new area, which is focused on what we, we used to think Labour did focus on, which was essentially social justice. I mean, yes, I, do, I think there's something happening there about changes in political allegiances. One of the questions we've been asked as Women for India was, would you consider a women-only party? And I know that um, some of the Scandinavian countries have women-only parties, and, and we've, we've had a quick chat about it. Nobody seems to think it's, it's, you know, it's a great idea or something they want to invest their energy in. But the fact that that dialogue's happening at all, you know, should we have a, a women-only party promoting women? You're thinking, this landscape is changing. I can't imagine us going back to SNP, Labour, Ding dong, ding dong. After a, I mean, certainly not after a yes That's vote. That's what no one isn't. I mean, that no is one, no one, no change. It's a profoundly depressing narrative of everything's fine, no change. Things might get worse. You, you know, um, keep the British establishment. I mean, the, the no campaign is the British establishment. The British establishment in full baying voice, and they are terrifying. Um, Nigel Farage on, on the Andrew Neil programme last night saying, yes, the Scots shouldn't have been allowed to vote on whether we had fox hunting in England or not. And I'm thinking, this debate is now so far away from any of the issues that mean anything to me. Who knew? Who knew that they were still had some kind of grudge because Scottish MPs voted against fox hunting? If, if, if there was to be a no vote, I was kind of intrigued by this idea of what does happen to Labour. Because, I mean, you know, going through this process, I mean, yes, it's a win, I mean, clearly it is. But having worked so closely, as you say, with the, 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 all the figures of the establishment, working hand in glove with the Tories in order to, to defeat what will, in retrospect, look like a broadly left-wing, you know, focused on social justice campaign. I mean, what, what might happen to Labour at that point? You know, you can win, but it can be quite pyrrhic. I mean, yeah, they'll still be there, but then we've got Scottish elections coming up. I'm, I'm not, I've never been in the Labour Party, I've got friends who are in the Labour Party um, and, um, and, and they, they are still friends even if we're on opposite sides in this question. I don't honestly know what will happen to Labour. We know that the Labour vote, the traditional wheel it out Labour vote is ageing. They seem to be putting up sort of lots of emphasis on their new young activists. Um, including, and this was actually quite disgusting, they put up after um, the ex-Lord Provost of Edinburgh came out for a yes vote. Mm. They put up a photo of all these young shiny activists saying, you can have Labour's past, we are Labour's future. And I thought, oh really? So Keir Hardy, all the welfare state, that, all the Labour past, you are just disowning all of that. The picture was soon withdrawn. I suspect that you know the, the YTS guy or the intern guy was in charge of the, 
the marketing that night. Um, but the fact that people could even say that, could disown their past because you know, traditional Labour figures had moved, suggests but, a party in deep trouble. Well, is that not what happens in a campaign? See, people get so focused on scoring points off yes. their opponent that they forget where they come from, what the point of the movement was in the first place, and that that may be what has gone wrong for Labour. They've forgotten what they're about in you, the headlong rush to win this. You, you, should, you need to get somebody in from the Labour Party. There are good, good people in the Labour Party who believe very passionately in the same things that we all do. And what you have to always remember... And who wanted Devo Max, who wanted Devo it. Max. And what you have to remember is that in terms of the Labour Party and the SNP, the differences are the tip of the iceberg. Underneath, Labour and SNP agree on human rights, they agree on democracy, they agree... All the core things. There is much more agreement between Labour and SNP than there is difference. In this issue, on the independence referendum, a sharp difference. On other issues, it would be very easy for people to move between the two parties and to reach common ground if it wasn't for our sort of adversarial political system. Um, and that's really important. We talked about a no vote. It's really important to remember that the no campaign are not our enemies. They're our friends who we disagree with on this issue. And I think that's absolutely key that we don't we don't go down the road of this, the kind of people and, and some of the things that are said in Twitter, you know, the Ian Smarts of this world or whatever. That is not who we are and that does not speak to the best of us at all. Thanks very much for being so charitable. <laughs> I'm just a hippie. <laughs> Kate Caskey, thank you.